outstanding. Uh, and then talented players, you know, a first-round pick in the secondary uh, making plays. Uh, offensively, again, similar uh, schematically. Uh, there's always differences, but there are similarities in some of the things that they're doing um, on offense. And then special teams, uh, really, really good unit. Coach Boyer does an outstanding job uh, with those guys. So we really uh, will have our work cut out for us in, in all three sides of the ball. Uh, have to play a complete game, a 60-minute game. And, uh, but looking forward to the challenge. And with that, I'll take any questions. Have you ever seen a kicker uh, take on sort of rock star status the way Keith has uh, over the last? Uh... I, I'd be the, I would not be the one to notice said rock star status. Uh, but he's, uh, he's got his head on straight. He's, he's got, he knows he's got to keep working at it. You went back and watched how impressive were Donovan's catches over the middle there in traffic. Yeah, huge, huge. Uh, early and late. You know, uh, he's a guy that, that we really trust, have trusted since the moment he stepped on campus. Uh, he's going to be where he's supposed to be. He's physical. Uh, he, he can run away from you. He, he can separate and has done that uh, over the course of time just in that game. They have some good DBs in that last one. So uh, they were playing sticky in coverage at times, and he went up and got the ball. Big frame. How much better has he gotten at it actually you know, using it in the trap? Yeah, I, I think uh, you've seen Donovan certainly mature physically over the time he's been with us. Uh, young man uh, when we got him and, and works very hard in the weight room, takes care of his body. So, uh, yeah, I think his size is definitely an asset. 11 quarterbacks who didn't play preseason went 3-8 and eight in game one. Your quarterback played, put sparingly, uh, but they came out confused and a little discombobulated. Does any of that cause you to rethink playing your regulars in the final game? No, it doesn't, Tony. I mean, I think you've got to be careful to look at one season of uh, sample size. But I think for us, we take everything into account, take all the things we've done in practice and meetings, et cetera. Um, like we talked about in the preseason, there, there's not one right way to do it. Uh, some teams have philosophies on other ends of the spectrum. I know some of them probably won, some of them probably lost in, in week one, but there's many more games to go. Does it do anything for your team when your quarterback in his debut you know, leads them down for a game-winning drive? Let's say it one more time. Does it... Does it do anything for your team going forward when your quarterback in his debut takes you down for a game-winning drive? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, as you guys know, with, with the quarterback and, and you're the trigger man, you're getting a ton of credit, a ton of blame, and uh, for him in, in that first opportunity to come through on a two-minute drive. You know, we, we came through on a two-minute drive at the end of the half, only got three, but operationally got the ball down there in, in time to score. So uh, we've worked two-minute a ton uh, in, in practice and walkthroughs and those type of things. So uh, does it give a message to the team? Uh, I think your overall play does. How, how you play, how you lead, how you carry yourself is what sends messages to the team. Two minute drive, it doesn't necessarily generate more confidence in a quarterback either way. Yeah, I think winning does, Jake. I, I really do. I think just uh, doing enough to win, uh, leading the football team. I think Carolina's defense reacted to Nick and Kareem being on the field together. Do you think you move, using it moving forward that that opens things up for other guys? Yeah, they, Carolina, had faced a bunch of that personnel type group previously. Uh, so we had a lot of tape on how they. We thought they may respond to the, that type of personnel grouping. Um, it, it's really a game by game basis. What what gives the defense problems? I mean, those two guys are two of your better playmakers. I mean, do you think that kind of affects how the defense approaches when those two guys are together? Yeah, it, it's it's the you know certain defenses have one philosophy and, and will treat the second runner as one thing, and certain defenses have another philosophy and, and may play a different front. You really. Uh, sometimes you know going into a game what they're gonna, how they're gonna respond. Other times you put it out there to see how they're gonna respond, and and if it's this, then we'll go here. Th those type of things. Talk always about you want your players to get better as the season goes on. And Jacoby mentioned that today. What specifically you want to see him improve from week one to? Well, I mean. I could single out the entire offense, just operation. You know, we were there and. and in a loud environment, in the heat, we didn't operate clean enough, especially early. Uh, I put a lot of that on me, uh, obviously, and then also the quarterback. We, we put a lot on the quarterback and ask him to, to run that huddle and those type of things. So I think he'll continue to get better there. Uh, made a lot of good decisions in the football game. 
Uh, I know there's throws that he can make, will make, those type of things. But uh, for us, for the players, when you talk about improvement, we're really just looking for the small things, all the little things that add up to be the big thing. So it could be things an individual that we're going to work on um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week just to shore up some technique. A quarterback like Jacoby has been with so many teams and so many years. Is it hard to speed up his processing? Or is he ingrained in, in what he does? Um, yeah. No, I, I don't see... I don't see that as a de- – are you saying is it a detriment to yeah. – no, I don't think so at all. I think I think he's seen a lot of football, Tony, just from a defensive perspective. I think being in the divisions he's been in, he's seen a, all the defenses that there are. So he's a very good feel on defensive coverage rules, pressure answers, those type of things. Um, and then when it comes to a new system, certainly reads can change a little bit. As we know, terminology uh, oftentimes changes, but he's done a really nice job of of, um, of not letting that slow him down. When you mentioned the confidence to win, there were a lot of questions with Jacoby just even being new here on how a win would look like for the Cleveland Browns. Did you guys need that to kind of prove to yourself, to everybody, that this is a way we can win games? No, I mean, no. I mean, we don't. I don't. I don't think of it that way. I, I don't believe our players do. Uh, it, it's hard to win. It's hard to win on the road. It's hard to win at home. I mean, you get tough. Uh, you get tough outs in this league. Kevin, is it fair to say that you were hesitant to use Kareem and Nick together, or you just viewed it as they were better, kind of individually, as spelling each other or staying fresh, those kinds of things? I really think it's a week to week proposition and I think there's times when it makes sense there's other times when you do want to keep those guys fresh uh, and if they if they're both playing at a high level whether they're on the field together or not takes a backseat to them playing at a high level and doing things that give the defense difficulty now that you've seen um, this offense in operation for one full game uh, do you feel like you'll be able to now look at it and try to get Jacoby to spread the ball around more and get David Njoku involved? Yeah, without a doubt. Sure, yes. Yeah, I think there's, again, small samples, a lot of plays, but small sample size in one game um, where I I do think that those things will all even out in terms of touches. Mike, the use of Michael Dunn to Mm -hmm. uh, tackle Ellis, you also had your third tight end Mm -hmm. active, but why did you use Tackle yeah, Jess, well, like I told you guys, Jesse's very smart, uh, but he just got here, so didn't want to overburden him. He wasn't on a team there for a while, so wanted to make sure that we didn't put too much on his plate. Uh, Michael's done a really nice job for us uh, in pass protection and, and run blocking, so felt like there were some opportunities on plays where we could get him out there. Just temporary until the tight end gets up to speed? Could be, but again, if, if Michael plays well, it's, it's always an option for us. What are the main areas of uh, growth you've seen from James Hudson from rookie season to you know, just this past Sunday? Yeah, I think general understanding of, of what we're doing, what we're asking him to do, how he's supposed to do it. Uh, there's no shortage of individual drill that he's had with Coach Callahan and Coach Peters. So uh, I think just refining his technique, but he's a young player. I uh, remember was a previously was defensive lineman so there's a lot of uh things in in the offensive line that are nuanced and it just is going to it takes time for a young player he's working very very hard at it. i think he's doing a nice job you know the jets run defense versus ball uh yeah really an, an impressive front uh you know going up against baltimore which presents all sorts of unique challenges i, I thought they did a nice job they are uh, an attacking front uh, again similar to what we preach here uh, but just the players that they have that can come off the ball and are physical and they wave them, they'll play, um, you know, up to eight defense alignment um, and just constantly coming at you. It's just a, a very aggressive front. You guys commit to the run. So do you just go in knowing it's not, it might not be as easy as some other games or just have to stick with it? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the the nature of, of when we show up and, and the run game, teams are going to try and defend the run. We get that. And, and teams are going to try and defend it in different ways. Uh, you know, there's multiple fronts. There's multiple ways that you can uh, get an extra defender in the box and those type of things. So what's so important, Scott, just reminding the players is 
you fill that bucket up with knowledge about Carolina and how their players play and their scheme, and, and now it's you have to fill it back up with, all right, here's a new scheme, here are new players, and, and our counter punches are, are going to be different because of that. Look, we saw the Vikings when they, in the end of 2019 when you played Salah in the playoffs. Did you, you already knew you were going to hire Joe Woods if you got the job, or was there something as a result of playing that defense that you said, I want that kind of defense? I don't remember, um, but yeah, I, Joe and I had a relationship. I was very impressed with what the what you, the Joe's influence on that defense uh, I thought was was impressive. Uh, him together with Coach Sala, I think, are two really really outstanding football minds, um, and and that that was a great great defense. I, I know exactly what Coach Sala is doing in New York. It has all the pieces of being a very 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 good defense. Read with the uh, officials picking up that late flag um, from a experience and learning standpoint. Mm -hmm. What what did you take away from that play, and will you revisit that as as you go over those kinds of scenarios? We always do, uh, as you can imagine. I'll just go with whatever they ruled. Um, but every single one of those, we, we spend Friday mornings going over things that happen around the league. Uh, pl uh, plays like that have happened before, so it's just a matter of learning from all those all those moments. Kind of a gray area, though, there is yeah. there with that play in particular. Yeah, and, and I think Jacoby knew what he was trying to do, and, and I think, uh, again, the officials ruled what they ruled. Yeah, but now we're going to shorten anything this week or hold anybody back because of next week being a short week. I mean, you guys are always thinking ahead. Yeah, uh, we are. So today's practice will kind of reflect that. Not going to be a full uh, Wednesday, just keeping next Thursday in mind, uh, but back to a normal Thursday, Friday. And I'm looking at a story on Zaire Mitchell Payton. From your uh, practice squad, mm -hmm. what what uh, did that impress you about him in in training camp? Because he was kind of an unknown. Yeah, very very big, very strong, strong hands. Uh, works very hard uh, in here all hours, uh, working on his craft. So a good young player. What went into the decision to go with um, Jerome instead of Dearness? Oh. Kicking game, yeah, kick return. Dearness is a, as you know. Uh, we really, really liked Ernest. There will be times where Ernest is going to play, play a lot, and help us win, but just wasn't last week. Good. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you. You're up. All right, there's Coach Stefanski at the podium on a first Friday. Welcome in, Dr. Z. Yo, yo, yo. How you doing, brother? You know, real well. Did you see um, – we'll, we'll have some reaction to that. Uh, not a whole lot there. And, and you know, the good news is is – that's what you want it to be after week one. Uh, you don't have a lot of injury to deal with. You don't have uh, some of the things that others around the league are being. You think about T.J. Watt, Dak Prescott, the long snapper in Cincinnati, who's down for uh, much of the season now. Yeah. Um, you don't have any of those questions here. It was a, a pretty straightforward. It, it allows – and all because of Kate York's kick. It allows for a very different tenor in the press oh conference than it would have been otherwise. Yeah. Um, and the we Jets, come out of it healthy. You know, ah. We certainly uh, do. Uh, with those guys. So, we really uh, – all right. Anyway, yeah, we'll get some more of that. Just some more of the good vibes. Just a little Keep taste. Just a little taste. Keep those good vibes coming. But yes, it is a completely different, you know, mood in the facility. Everything because you were able to get that win. And so Cade York did a great job, and you saw that reflected in a fairly mundane press conference, which is fine. You know, typically if there are fireworks in a press conference, that's not coming out of positivity. It's coming yeah. out of injury or something went wrong and you ended up losing a game you shouldn't have, unfortunately, for the Browns because of Katie York and because of Jacoby Brissett and Donovan Peoples-Jones at the end getting it done there. And the defense for, you know, 47 out of 50 plays, 94% of the defensive snaps were elite, folks. Yep. That we were able to get that win. And so now we're on to the Jets, a team that looked, to be honest, I mean, they looked dreadful against the Baltimore Ravens. They are dreadful. Uh, they're, 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 they're not 32. Great. Right now they're 32. That's where they would this be. This is when you got to right. come and you got to take care of business. And, and we will meet the Jets. Uh, get, a, get a look at those guys going forward. The NFL remains king from a rating standpoint. I wanted to run a hot take by you. Um, last night, uh, the blonde fell asleep with not Black Cobra. He was uh, reading and they fell asleep. And so that's yep. hall pass. I can watch whatever I want. And um, and sometimes I like to revisit old movies, and I, I like to flip a little bit. And I flipped onto 
uh, The Godfather 3, which I guess Coppola redid as The Godfather Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone. Are you aware that he did this? Is that where they run it? One no, movie that's where the Godfather saga where they play start to finish chronologically. Chronologically, okay. This is he just recut parts of 3 because it was critically a little bit kind of critically panned compared to the other two, which are, by the way, I think, a little too much hate on Godfather 3. It's probably still really good. Yeah. Um, okay. But this is the hot take, having watched some of it last night. Okay. A lot of people pan the Sofia Coppola performance. Um, so she was thrown into it's it. widely panned. Widely panned. Um, in retrospect, it's in my opinion, it's not as bad as people think it is. And I actually think her being new to acting and the way that she's kind of naive plays in well with Andy Garcia. The bigger issue... Robert Duvall is the conciliary. Yeah. Tom. In the first two? Yeah. George Hamilton. <laughs> what? He's the guy. Is he, He's a conciliary. Is he so Duvall. That tan? Yeah. Duvall wow. wanted, similar to what Pacino got to do the film, Coppola balked, so they recast it. It's George Hamilton. Instead, that's far more of an issue than wow. Sofia Coppola far more yeah that sounds I mean just hearing it I hadn't laughable. seen that movie in years 20 years at least and I watched probably an hour of it last night and uh Andy Garcia is a force of nature but it that the George Hamilton as Michael Corleone's conciliary is, is a lot to wrap your head around wow yeah just yeah. the look of it um all right we will meet the Jets uh the ratings are in from the NFL big Big, big, big awards coming in from Cade York. Uh, you'll hear from Jacoby Brissett on the program as well. You have that to look forward to, which is nice. Plus, Z goes one on one with Grant Delpit around the NFL. We are off and running on a first Friday edition, Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Rumpke Waste Recycling, family owned and operated. Whether you join them as a customer, as an employee, become part of the family, visit Rumpke.com to learn more. You were on uh, Rich Eisen before we started this show, and we yeah. saw his clip yesterday. And it is interesting. Uh, the the elf reveal has it, it's created a little bit of a, a firestorm, I suppose. That's probably too strong of a word, but certainly a conversation piece around the league. And I think what it stems from is if you aren't um, a, a Browns fan, I'm not sure if you would understand it. And that's what I think most people just didn't understand that that is a logo that's been around. If you don't follow this team really, you wouldn't know that that was the one that Stefanski had on his hoodie for the first couple of years when he was yeah, always wearing that hoodie. Our big year. Um, that, that that was part of that. The, the stiff Brownie the Stiffy Elf uh, with the stiff arm versus Proud Elf. So you have stiff or proud. Um, and so they, he gets voted on, and that's it. But I, I think with Browns fans, it's that was always he was that was always well known. I mean, I'm not from here; my wife's from here, but I knew that he was that almost immediately associated the elf with with the Browns. I'm surprised how few people have around the league. It is surprising. And talking with Rich, he had you know no idea about the elf that yeah. it was even a part of uh, of what the Browns have done here in Brownie and the the variations of Brownie and. You know, and I think due in large part because it was an original, you know, 1946, it went away. Art Modell did not like the Elf, so that goes away in the 60s when he takes over. It comes back, you know, in 99, a little bit sparingly. 2006, it was the training camp logo. Uh, and then it really, I think, burst back into popularity. Like, Brownie's been at all the games every, since I've been here. You know, mm -hmm. the mascot of Brownie, yeah, and then sure. you've got uh, Chomps. But it had not been really at the forefront until Stefanski's hoodie, I would say. Ambassador of Cool, it, during that era, it started to pop in a little bit. It, yeah. it was sparingly. You'd see it at stuff. Um, credit were due. I, it, you'd start to see it there a little bit. Yep. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think the Stefanski hoodie is what <laughs> elevated no it. Um, and then it started to be on hats, and then it started to be everywhere. Um, look, this is – let's be real honest. I mean, state of Ohio, not great at naming sports teams. It's a real struggle for us. I mean, we're named after a guy – you know, it's orange. If you were restarting, you wouldn't probably do it that way. You, it's beloved now. But right. the one thing that Brownie is, I think, better than a helmet is it's something from a branding standpoint you can identify with. And, you know, when equipment's the logo, that's hard. That's yes. a tough go. Yeah. Uh, you can't it, like you put a helmet on a hat. You put a helmet. You know what I mean? It's a little bit of a tough thing. A, a picture no of a helmet on a hat. So I think that's now that you have the Brownie. I think that's why people, when they saw it on the Stefanski hoodie, they jumped to it. Um and, and I, th I think there's something to it. But I think if you're from here, you probably love it, and or most do. It feels like it's been overwhelming. I know we did the fan vote and the various incarnations of the Elf were the overwhelming picks yep. uh, in this thing. So I think I think that's it. I don't think people realized, and even when I was talking to Rich, he hadn't realized that there had been nothing at midfield for a few years. Yeah. And that before it was the helmet um, and that, you know, it was a fan vote. That's, that's the yeah. thing about it. You had nearly 100,000 people voted. Right. And this was the, what the fans came up with. And I think we have the best fans in all of professional sports. And so I, I like it. I'm, I'm big on elves, you know, pro by elf. the way, pro, the movie I love. It's a quote, sure. you know, to quote a buddy in there, big on elf culture. Big. Yeah. Huge. 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 So like, I, I think it's great. I love it. Yeah, I do too. Um, and I, I asked my kids, it's interesting when you ask the kids uh, what, what they, what do you think they would say? They want the dog, the dog. Well, that's what, and I think a lot of people do, and 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 we have tried, mm -hmm. and, and in fact, early in my tenure here with the Browns, we that. tried to rebrand the dog pound, and it was not a good dog. It was a disaster. Right. I think there could be a cool dog that goes with it, but you know, the dog pound, it's is, a section. It's a section. Right. It just it would be like if the Raiders all of a sudden like used a ho black hole as the logo because of the black hole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Which, how could you even have that? It's the absence of no light can escape. <laughs> Correct. We are the only one whose official logo is now it's still a helmet. The Rams were a helmet for a while, but they got away from it. Nobody else is, right? No. The Colts, maybe. But or is I think the, the, horse, just the shoe. Just the shoe is just their the logo. the shoe probably is their logo, I think. Um, for the longest time, there were the, the Rams were for sure. They had the – and they, I don't know why they needed to. Like, they – actually have a ram oh, oh, rams horns everybody knows what a ram is yeah that's right it's all pretty easy if you did lean into the dogs there is no other you would own the canine world because there is no wolf in the nfl there's no coyotes in the nfl there's no fox in the nfl so you'd own the entire canine corner of the mascot world if you mm -hmm, did mm -hmm. if you did lean into that but i think i think the brownie's great and um i think our fans 
certainly get it, uh, absolutely. Um, in terms of uh, the awards for Cade York, they keep pouring in, named AFC Special Teams Player of the Week. He's the fifth rookie in the NFL's history to win Special Teams Player of the Week in Week 1. Uh, the first Browns player to win the award since Jamie Gillen, the Hammer, Hammer, won it in Week 2 in 2019. The first Browns kicker to earn the honor since Phil Dawson won it in Week 15, 2015. That was – it's interesting. I've, I haven't thought about the, th the Hammer in a while. But the, we did a coaches show remote where he explained, like, how he didn't think about any of it and was just kind of a natural savant kicker. What about runner. he changed the before week right one? Right before week one, he three changed step it. step to two step. Yeah. Yeah, change, well, I can do that. I can kick it at that. Sure. And then was just undone by that mishap in Kansas City. That was it. Couldn't get over it last year. Mentally, that that's when it – right, mentally, that's when it, it got to him. But it, it, the good news is the hammer has landed on his feet. He's the punter for the New York Giants, also a 1-0 and football team. Got a dub. Got a dub. Got a dub. Over those Tennessee Titans. Wow. Absolutely so. So good job out of Cade on that front. All right, coming up next, we will meet your New York Jets. Interesting place where this organization has been in, um, where they are now, where they're going, what the plan is. You like a lot of the pieces, but it's not coming together probably as quickly as they would have liked. A lot of that has to do with quarterback. We'll get into that coming up next. They're your opponent for the home opener on Sunday. You'll listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
The Bath Authority can give you the bathroom of your dreams. You can transform your current bath into a custom bath for a spa-like experience. Let the Bath Authority make it a reality for you at a fraction of the cost of the competitors. The Bath Authority is our area's premier bath and shower remodeler, expert, factory trained installers. Give them a call right now. You get 500 bucks off your next custom bath or shower remodel. That number is 216-220-8399 or go to thebathauthority.com. Remember, they're where affordability meets quality. Large selection of bath projects affects the biggest in the area. All made in the United States. Superior products with expert installers at thebathauthority.com at 216-220-8399. 500 bucks off. Give them a call right now. Bless you to you, my friend. Thank you. Um all right, it's it's meet the Jets. Before we get into you know some of the specifics on all of this, um, are they kind of like the are they the Lions in the AFC in our lifetime? Not that bad. They're certainly in the conversation. Well, our lifetime. You and I are men. We're forty. Okay. So you know we've been in AFC championship games. So have they. One. With the Sanchez for sure. Well, was that was that Sanchez? Yeah, they they weren't even. Once? Yeah, they weren't even. It's not like they were terrible. With Kenny O'Brien and Al Two. Pretty off the off the grid though. Curtis, my favorite, Martin. They well, that was their best era, right? Was that era? So they go back to the Namath uniforms. Yep. They they win with Parcells and Martin, um, but it feels like other than that, they had a little run with Pennington. But I think that was with was that with Parcells that was with, too. I think that was that era. Yeah. Correct, and I'm not sure exactly how successful that era really was. Well, I don't know I mean, either. Sexy I mean, Rexy, you could argue, might have been the most successful in the last. Oh right, he's the years. one how they get to the AFC Championship yeah. game. Yeah, with, with him. Rex and Mark Sanchez, not with, Sanchez. with Parcells. Parcells was uh, yeah. Keyshawn Johnson, and that would have been Curtis Martin though too. At that time, with with Sanchez. No, he was there with uh, Parcells yeah, when before, Parcells with was there. Pennington. Parcells got him there. Uh, he brought him from New England to the Jets. All right, so here's so in our lifetime, they were in the playoffs. Just uh, you're, we're talking our lifetime. Yep. So they were in uh, the wild card. They lost in '81. Lost in the AFC Championship game in '82. That's got to be strike here. Is that strike '82? Okay. That's got '83 strike. '83 was. They were nothing. Uh, I'll check. 85, losing the wild card. 86, make it to the divisional round and lose. 91, losing the wild card. 98, with Parcells, they lose in the AFC Championship. They were 12 and 4. They had a stretch of their 9 and 7, 12 and 4, this 8 is their and 8, best 9 run. and 7, 10 and 6, 9 and 7 from 97 to 2002. Lose wild card, lose division. Lose division, lose wild card. And then back to back years, they made it to the AFC Championship with Sanchez. Uh, 2009, 2010, and Rex. I would not have now, had that back since back. then. They're bad, but no, they are. No, not. they're not. They're definitely not. Yeah, I had forgotten how relevant they were from Parcells all the way through Herm, Mangini, and Rex Ryan. And Man Mangini made a cameo in The Sopranos. Remember, he was the Man Genius. The Man Genius. Yeah. He NFL was Vesuvio. Vesuvio two. By the way, not strike Vesuvio season one. was 1982. So a that's 50, a 57 day long player strike. Reduced the 82 ga season from 16 games, games to nine. Yeah, they were yeah. six and three. So that was it. Yeah. yeah. So they're, I mean, they're still, best. No, it's really respectable. From 98 to through 2010, they're really respectable. I think probably the reason I perceive them to be worse than they are is because the Giants won Super Bowls during that time. And you're comparing them mostly with them and the Patriots. And the Giants have won a bunch of Super Bowls in our life, and the Patriots have won a bunch. So you think that they're worse off than they are, but they actually were really good from the late 90s through the early – all the way through the two, early 2000s. Yes. Yeah. Favorite uh, favorite Jet uniform in their history? The the white and greens. The, like, the Broadway, Broadway Joes. Joes. Yeah. yeah. Even when they brought back the white helmet with when Parcells was there and all of that, they still went with a darker green. And if you go look at the old Namath, it's a Kelly. It's really more of a Kelly. It's a yeah. bright green that they had. It's just a good look, it. though. I, so I don't know why they got rid of them at all. I do think, and this was something that I remember I had heard. I don't remember who. Who told me this? There was a player that said that the Jets thought that they looked – those jerseys, the whites, mm -hmm. made them look slow. What an odd thing to say. How does that – how does I the don't uniform know. make you look Cause slow? Because I'm pretty sure – didn't they wear whites? And a lot of times they would wear black on the feet with it. And They'd they, wear black cleats. Yeah, and they thought it made it look slow. I don't know. That's Did you what feel? I do you feel like white or black shoes make you look quicker or slower one way or the other? I think I would look faster in white shoes. I do too. That's what I think. 
I think you look. I think black seems for me like when I play hoops or whatever. Back when I used to, it felt like if I if I wore dark shoes, but I didn't wear much. That those felt like they I was more plodding. I find that on a basketball court, it doesn't make as much of a difference for me. Not that no. I'm out on a football field, but I find like football, baseball, the white cleats, the whites look faster. They do. I agree. The soap jacks. Yeah. It's an interesting franchise um, in, in terms of their history and the Broadway Joe stuff. Sure. Haven't been back to a Super Bowl since. They've drafted high a lot. They've drafted young quarterbacks a lot. They have one now who was hurt early and would have been a lot of fun had he not been because yeah. the reports were that he was looking pretty good and he had a really interesting offseason to say the least. So let's meet the Jets. Let's meet the Jets and we'll start on the offensive side of the ball and they will be quarterbacked once again by Joe Flacco, 98 and 79 as a starter. He is currently fifth in wins and passing yards among active quarterbacks. But that is because his best days are long in the rearview mirror. We are a far cry from him being the Super Bowl champion and MVP of that Super Bowl in 2012. He was a first-round pick of the Ravens back in 2008. Last four years as a starter, 2-12 and 12 with the Jets, 0-6 oh as a starter. Last week, you know, they throw it. He drops back 62 times, three sacks, 59 pass attempts. That was most in the NFL. Uh, and they got blasted 24-9 to by the Ravens. Their only touchdown coming in garbage time, by the way, there. They do have, I think, a pretty cool group of, of young skill position talent, though. Your wide receivers, you've got Garrett Wilson, the 10th uh, overall pick in this year's draft. Corey Davis was a first-round pick of Tennessee in 2017, and Elijah Moore was their second-round pick last year. And Elijah Moore, interesting little nugget about him has a catch of more than 20 yards in seven straight games. That is the longest such second longest such streak in the NFL. And then they've yeah. got a real talented player in Braxton Berrios, who is a slot receiver, very good at that, had a couple rushing scores, a couple receiving scores last year, but first team all pro kick returner and punt returner last year. The Jets, by the way, were number one in the NFL in kick return average, number two in the NFL in punt return average a year ago. So Back-to-back -back weeks, we're going to have a good returner to deal with. That we dealt with Andre Roberts very well mm -hmm. a week ago. We'll need to do that there. Uh, their running backs are young. Michael Carter, fourth-round pick of uh, last year. Uh, Mike LaFleur called him the engine of their offense in week one. He had uh, 17 touches, 100 total yards. Brees Hall was their second-round pick this year out of Iowa State. Back-to-back -back Big, Big 12 player of the year. Uh, he got, in this game, 12 touches and produced 61 total yards but did lose a fumble in the red zone. They brought in two tight ends. Now, tell me, this was interesting in my research, and I don't know if it was matchup right. specific, but we'll find out. So they signed C.J. Uzoma yep. from Cincinnati last year, coming off of a career year. He had 49 catches, 493 yards, and five touchdowns. And they signed Tyler Conklin, who is coming off of a career year himself from Minnesota, 61 catches, 593 yards, and three touchdowns. And yet – they really didn't play two tight ends much together. They played them together on only five plays in week one, which I found fascinating because it seemed like that would be maybe what they're trying to get their base. But three good receivers, two tight ends. Just seems odd they paid both of those guys. In week one, it was all Conklin. Uzoma didn't even get a target. They threw it 62 times. And Uzoma didn't get a target. Conklin got wild. seven, four catches, 14 yards. He did score the touchdown. Uh, so that's the offense and the skill position. But here are the problems. They are very good up the middle on their offensive line. Aliyah Vera Tucker is the right guard. He was their first-round pick last year, had a great rookie season, and he was the number one graded run blocker in the league last week at Pro Football Focus. Their left guard was Lakin Tomlinson, who they signed three years, $40 million in the offseason, was a pro bowler with the Niners a year ago, uh, but did not have a good week one, gave up eight pressures allowed week one, most in the NFL. Center Connor McGovern, solid veteran, uh, was the number nine center at Pro Football Focus in 21. George Fant has been a starter 30 games with the Jets, um, and he had a rough week one as well. Four pressures, one sack, um, but had a good 2021. It was a highly graded pass blocker in 2021. Here's the guy, Max Mitchell. Poor Max Poor Mitchell. Poor Maxie. So they have Mekhi Becton, who was a first-round pick, out for the year neat. They signed the veteran Dwayne Brown to come in and play tackle for them. He goes on IR with a shoulder, and so Max Mitchell, a fourth-rounder from Louisiana, had to start give up a sack and three pressures in week one, and I, I guarantee there will be a Miles Garrett, Jadevian Clowney bullseye on poor Max Mitchell. They're good up the middle, though. This is a good interior, yeah. but the strength of this line, much like ours, the guards. Vera Tucker and Tomlinson, that's the strength, strength of that offensive line. So that's who they are offensively, and it sounds kind of good on paper, 
it was not pretty because Joe Flacco at this point is a statuesque quarterback who is no threat with his legs, can't buy time in the pocket, and is clearly quick to check down. 19 passes to running backs last week. Well, 19. Yeah, and this this stat from the notes here with Gibby is uh, Michael Fleur's the offensive coordinator there. Yes. Called pass plays on 40 of 44 offensive snaps in the second half, and they were only down 10 to 3. That's it, it's wild. Uh, and That's a crazy it's number, man. Stunning. Yes. It so, is first of all, it's a ton thing. of plays. Yes. And second of all, it's a crazy discrepancy when you can't really throw it with much effectiveness. No, it's wild. And so that offensive line, certainly an issue. Now, defensively, uh, we heard uh, Kevin Stefanski. Real quick offensively, yeah, just to jump in. Please. This is it as you're going through all of that. And if they have Mekhi Becton, it's just did they hit on the quarterback? big picture because everything if, else checks if they did if they hit on talent. Wilson then this division is going to be a lot more interesting because as you're going through all of that it's a ton of talent the skill position talents all there the line talents there Becton's really good it's just a matter of did they hit on Wilson and this is just after they tried with Darnold so they did this a couple of times in a short period and I just I mean a lot on paper Garrett Wilson Corey Davis Elijah Moore is it's full day an upper echelon wide receiver trio no doubt. I mean, I think it's probably, argue that. probably a top eight trio in the league. I have no problem with that. Defensively, very talented team up front. You know, Carl Lawson, remember their big free oh, agent yeah, signing guy. a year ago? We loved him. We loved Carl Lawson. He missed all of last year with a torn ACL. He is back week one. Pretty good. Two tackles, tackle for loss, three pressures, two quarterback hits. He has 13 straight games with two or more pressures, which is the fourth longest streak in the NFL. The other three players above him, all perennial Pro Bowlers, you got Quinn and Williams, you got Solomon Thomas, a couple of first rounders. John Franklin Myers has played very well for them, and then they drafted Jermaine Johnson was one of their first round picks. Their three first round picks, Mosley last year, 168 tackles. We can get after him in coverage. Quan Alexander, I mean, again, Quan Alexander now in his eighth year, older but still a talented guy who's been around the league. Sauce Gardner was the fourth overall pick in yep. this year's draft. Uh, they got Lamarcus Joyner, who at one time was a Pro Bowler with the Rams. Mm -hmm. Ashton Davis, Jordan Whitehead, DJ Reed. There's talent here. Now, what was impressive, and you heard Stefanski was asked about it, they limited the Ravens in week one as far as running the football goes to just 63 yards, which is the lowest total of in the Lamar Jackson era. In a game started by Lamar Jackson, they've never rushed for fewer than the 63 yards they rushed for against the Jets. So, How often did Baltimore try? Not. Not is the answer very often. I'm Lamar pulling just I'm pulling it up. six carries for Lamar Jackson. I want to say 11 for Kenyon Drake, and he was the leading ball carrier. Uh, so for they're them. still waiting on the backs. No so Dobbins. They, yeah, they only ran it 21 times. No Gus Edwards. But they were limited to 63 yards on 21 carries. I mean. I'll tell and, you what's crazy is like they, the Jets had, you know, 80 plays. Well, yeah. Compared to 51 for Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah. The Jets also had seven. Seven I mean, he's 37 drives. of 59. 59. Yeah, he led the NFL in both completions and in pass attempts in week number one and in checkdowns and passes to running backs with 19. They had seven of their drives were for 20 or fewer yards. I mean, this is not an, uh, an offensive juggernaut by any stretch. We should be able to get after them. Again, good defense against the Ravens. They struggled. Lamar was able to throw for the three touchdowns, 17 to 32, 13, and three touchdowns. They played interestingly enough. So looking at a couple things and getting ready for this mm -hmm. game. Week one, and I don't know if this was because of Lamar. Week one, they blitzed 17% of the time, which was 26th in the NFL. Last year, they blitzed 28% of the time, which was 13% 13th in the NFL. Week one, they play cover three and quarter 75% of their snaps against the Ravens. Last year in 2021, it was 51% of the snaps. They played a lot more man one last year than they did against the Ravens. We'll see man one. Carolina, 36% man one, second most in the NFL against us in week one so we got to be on the lookout for that and they've got some talented corners like i said certainly led by sauce gardner who was actually on before me on the rich eisen show talking about his sauce and wings at the winking lizard oh there you go hey uh this should be in a way a mirror defense i mean a lot of i mean robert solid joe woods it's all coming from the same place it's all 100 seattle little seattle stuff and then they take it to san francisco and um, so you ought to be very familiar with what they're trying to do defensively. Yes, and, and it's going to be – they are very much, I might add, on first and second down, very standard. They will play a ton of cover three. They will play some quarters, first and second down. We know what they're going to give us in the zones. Now we get into third down, that's when they're going to bring heat. That's when they're going to bring in you know the pass rushing group. They're going to get after you, and they're going to play more man one. So I think for the Browns, 
one thing that's very important is that they stay out of third downs. We were in third down far too often against Carolina. We're a team that typically gets to a first down without getting to third down about half the time. Mm -hmm. We were doing it. Uh, we were getting the third down about 75% of the time in week one. So there's much room for improvement there. We've got to be better on first and second downs in this game. I think that's very important. When Sala took this job, and you liked him a lot from San Francisco. Yeah. I know Pedro we liked, liked him, him a lot. We interviewed him we, here. Yeah, I know he was interviewed we, here yeah. as well. Um, when he takes this – when you're an assistant coach and you take a job, sometimes you get one shot at it. You know, you want to make sure – like there's sure. only 32 of these jobs. you got to make sure it's the right one. Sure. In many years in the last decade, you could say this doesn't feel like it's the right time to take this job. They're, they're really close. They really are. It's, it's did you hit on Wilson? It's, it, it's that simple. Like, there, you have a quarterback draft. You pick a guy second overall. It was a consensus second overall when Wilson was picked. It's coming off of Darnold where you didn't get that one right. Yep. You got to get this one right. If they got it right, then look out. Because everything else checks off. You like Sala. You like what they're doing offensively. Feels like they're all rowing in the same direction. Oh, yeah. It's a oh, bright yeah. future if you land on the quarterback. If if Wilson is the right guy, and this game would have so much more intrigue around it, by the way, if you were quarterbacking. I think I'd still the Browns would definitely oh, be yeah. favored, but it becomes a more, much more interesting game uh, than it is with Flacco. Now, in week one, the worst team in the league on offense on third downs, well, you guessed it. It was, of course, the New York Jets. So I, I think that takes a little something away from it. Now, Browns fans would remember Joe Flacco 17 and 3 yeah. in his career against the Browns, but did lose his last start against the Browns, which was 2018. If you remember that low those many years ago, Baker's rookie year, a 12 to 9 slugfest at First Energy Stadium that the Browns came out on top. I believe it was a pass, a big pass to Derek Willie's late that set up a field goal and we Where was won Flacco 12 in 18? Was he, he was in, with the Ravens. With the Ravens in 18, yeah. so he went that that's, was his last that's that game I, to me. Cleveland. I thought he left there in like 15. No, that was but his it's last been game there that long. Yeah, because okay, remember so, Lamar didn't start the beginning of 18. No, that's true. That's right. Yeah, so they they were on their way out. They were transitioning to Lamar, but Harbaugh didn't want to do it. It's well, really one of the most amazing things. He's a lame. If that's right, he's a lame duck head coach in 18. He doesn't have a contract beyond 18. We thought he might be gone. He was going to be gone, and then they put Lamar in. He leans into it, buys into it. They all do. And then away we go with Lamar. I'm fairly confident, like, they make the change during a bye week, and they literally change the entire offense. They change the whole offense. Yeah. To yeah, literally Greg Roman jumps fit in. Lamar. They started to use all that stuff they ran with Kaepernick with San Francisco. Yep. Lamar takes to it, takes this league by storm. The next year he wins the MVP, and away we go. Yep. Um, so the one thing, this, this is pretty interesting, too, in terms of Flacco. He's lost his last 14 starts. Not great. Last eight in Denver and the last six here. Yeah, that's not great for Mr. Flacco. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh and six. Oh and six with the Jets. I like that. Although interestingly, his his touchdown interception ratio with the Jets isn't terrible. Ten to four. Did you watch their? I mean, I, I watched, watched the I game. I didn't see a second of this game between them and Baltimore. Give I me the flow of it. He's a statue. They never really were in it. Now, they did have one drive where they had a chance so to kind of get back 10, into three, it. even at 10-3, it felt much worse. Oh, yeah. It felt like they were. you never thought they were going to win the game. Uh, and then you had um, a situation where they were down into the red zone. He completes pass to Brees Hall. He gets tackled around the 16, fumbled. And then it was for sure. It was just over. It was over. It, but at no point did they feel like they were much of a threat. At no point did they feel like they were a threat to – Win that it's game. just a ton of plays so they just were able to move it not really they just had a ton of possessions so baltimore was a lot the baltimore must have been a lot of three and out so here's stuff, here huh? listen, this is how it goes okay kickoff jets four plays 14 yards punt they had a first down run that their first play of the game was a great run off the left side michael carter got about 14 yards and it yep. was three and out punt raven six plays 21 yards punt jets five plays seven yards punt Ravens, three plays, one yard, punt. Jets, three plays, 15 yards, pick. Ravens, four plays, seven yards, field goal, 3-0. Jets, three plays, nine yards, punt. So in the first quarter, 14 yards, punt, seven yards, punt, 15 yards, pick, nine yards, punt. Then the Ravens, punt, four plays, 16 yards. So this game was – I mean, the first quarter was dreadful. Mm -hmm. It was awful football. Second quarter, eight plays, 44 yards, missed field goal for the Jets. So they could have made it 3-3 three to three there. Ravens, five plays, 14 yards, punt. Jets, six plays, 18 yards, punt. Three plays, 62 yards, touchdown, 10 nothing. 
Eight plays, 48 yards, field goal, Jets, 10-3, end of the half. Third quarter, Ravens, six plays, 11 yards, punt. Jets, three plays, four yards, punt. Ravens, oh six plays, God. 44 yards, touchdown. Jets, five plays, 14 yards, punt. Ravens, five plays, 88, touchdown, now it's 24-3, and it's, no, it's we're over. Done. We're done. So then you get the good drive, nine plays, 75 yards, fumble. 16 plays, 62 yards, they turn it over on downs. And then 11 plays, 43 yards, touchdown. I mean, they're – I got to look – it's – it's outrageous. Their yard per play it had to be just awful. Total yards per play at four point eight. Ninety plays, three hundred and seventy eight yards. Jeez. Here's uh these are Flacco's first seven years in the league from a quarterback record standpoint. Eleven and five, nine and seven, twelve and four, twelve and four, ten and six, eight and eight, ten and six. It's rare that a guy has a seven year run from a winning standpoint like that. And the years are some are gives he has one year where he throws more interceptions and touchdowns. 2013 when they go eight and eight but it's rare that a guy has a start like that to his career that doesn't kind of maintain that trajectory his career is a really weird one in that he pops in they yep. win a super bowl early he wins a lot gets yeah. a big contract usually that's leads to like a matt ryan 15 year run or philip rivers 15 year run but i don't think anybody would think that joe flacco is of that level no not close but that's if you would have said after he wins the Super Bowl in 2012, is Joe Flacco the quarterback of the Ravens in 2022? You say, of course he is. Probably. Sure, sure. He's only 37. Here's a wild one for you, Gibbe. Guess the stats because sometimes I think our perception of Joe Flacco is off from reality. Mm -hmm. Gibbe, how many seasons in Joe Flacco's 11-year career has he thrown for – oh, I'm sorry, in his 15-year career? How many times has he thrown for – more than 25 touchdowns in 15 years in the NFL. 15 years. Just more than 25. Uh, I, I would say 10. Not. One. 2014 threw for 27 touchdowns. Bingo. Right on it. <laughs> but that's stunning. I mean, 25 in 2010. Worth noting that the league's a little different. Still, the 25 is not a huge bar. No, but it's not what it's like now where everybody's throwing for 40. I mean, it's a little different. He also but had. True, it is stunning. I think he, that's what I think. It's, he's, it's a really weird career. It is. He started his career with 10 straight years of double digit interceptions. Mm -hmm. Well, the one year it's brutal. I, it's, I think it's 2013. 19 touchdowns, 22 picks <sighs> that year. They go 8 and 8. Yep. And the next year he rebounds, 10 though. And six. 70 percent completions and 27 touchdowns, 12 picks. Yeah. Probably his best statistical year is the next year. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting. Um, I would not have had that he was there all the way till 18. I for some reason I thought he was gone before that. Browns fans, the Kevin Spansky Show remotes are back. Compliments of our friends at Bud Light. Join Z and Gerard tomorrow night, 78 West Park Station on Lorraine Road in Cleveland's Cam's Corner area. Meet Browns linebacker Anthony Walker Jr. Check out Thursday Night Football as the guys get you ready for the home opener on Sunday. Jacoby Brissett at the top of the hour. You'll listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
There's a new way to cheer on your Cleveland Browns with the help of your favorite four-legged companion, Barking Backers, presented by Milk Bones, the Browns' newest club for pet parents worldwide. Sign up today at BarkingBackers.com. Barking Backers, the fan club for dogs. Uh, seeing uh, reports from uh, our practice today, receiver Amari Cooper wasn't dressed or on the field for the open portion of today's practice. No official word yet from those who are there. Interesting. Worth monitoring. Indeed, it is. It would be quite interesting. I don't know. For those of you who have not seen it, I retweeted it earlier today. You don't follow me on social, so I'd like to bring please, your yeah, attention yeah, to uh, it. Please. Uh, but Brian Baldinger did a breakdown of yes, some of Amari did. Cooper's routes and releases in the game against Carolina Panthers. And to say that the guy is stupendous would be, would be nothing short of uh, telling the truth. He gets open. He gets open. Now we got to get him the football. And the man in charge of that is Jacoby Brissett. Here he's at the podium from earlier today. So what were kind of your impressions when you went back? You guys are down. This is 10. A lot of room for improvement. Um, definitely good that we you know, were able to win in all three phases of the game, but a lot of improvement, I know, for, for our side of the ball. And um, you know, looking forward to that challenge this week. What did you see on those couple of deep shots to Amari and then Kareem um, that you weren't able to connect? Um, I mean, it's just getting more repetitions at it. Uh, you know, that was probably our first time in game, like live action. but. Uh, uh, can't miss those, obviously, but uh, you know something that we're gonna work on. Is yeah. there something to be said about Amari didn't play in the preseason game you played in? Is there something about getting on game, you know, getting on the same page in in game speed compared to you know even in practice? Uh, a little bit, but I mean, he got held on like three of them. So yeah. it's hard to, <laughs> but uh, uh, I think it was. I thought we were on the on the same page for the most part again. Yeah. All's well that ends well. You won the game, but. You could have rewrite the preseason. Should you have played more? We won, so I, I don't think we should rewrite it. Jacoby, from, from your perspective, what's it like watching Nick Chubb run the ball? Oh, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, going back and watching the film uh, and seeing some of the things that he did in the backfield and then in open space is really special. Uh, you know, it's definitely a treat to have him here, and, and uh, you know, it was, it was very impressive to watch. How about his ability to make some of those jump cuts in the moment? How oh, impressive man, were those it was, watching it was, him back? I remember watching one in the game, and I was, I was, uh, I got a minus on it because I was supposed to carry out my fake, and I just watched, and um, it was worth it. Uh, that's for sure. When they're on the field together uh, in the game, there were at least two times they both released into pass patterns. So is that that's more than a running formation, obviously? Right? Oh, for sure. I think both of those guys have really good hands. Uh, can catch out of backfield. That's what makes them such a threat. Uh, and um, you know, we we obviously are trying to exploit that uh, and uh, so to keep the defense honest and those guys like I said with the ball in their hands they can do pretty much whatever what can you say about the what can you say about the job that Donovan did for you on Sunday like every single one of those catches he had a defender basically assaulting him just yeah, yeah how much confidence does that give you as a quarterback when you go to a guy that much and he makes as many catches as he can? uh it, it was great to see uh you know he played big uh a lot of those were, were huge plays that we needed at the right time, and he came he came up for us. Uh, and and um, you know, talking to Donovan, uh, and, and um, he 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 lives for those moments. Uh, he was ready for it, and obviously made made a lot of those plays. Uh, and uh, just got to continue to continue to work and and get more of them. So, you're watching the uh, the film, uh, looking back at it now. What did you like about the way you played, the way the offense? Move the ball. What did you not like? What are areas that you and the offense can get better? Well, then I'll be telling the Jets a game plan, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think it, it just starts with us. Uh, a lot of the things that that halted us was with our communication, our <coughs> fundamentals and technique, and our um, things that that had nothing to do with uh, the opposing team, but everything to do with us. So uh, you know, that's this week is to clean those things up and and. Uh, and, and, and get ready for a tough opponent. Do you feel like now that you have a game under your belt with this team, it'll help you settle in, you know, and play better week to week? Uh, that's the plan to play better every week. So, um, looking forward to that this week. And, and um, yeah. Hey, Jacoby, there was a time when kickers were maybe taken for granted, and now they've become not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they've become such a valuable weapon, right? What What does it mean to have a guy that, and I know it's only just one game in, but to have a kicker like? Ah, uh, special. Uh, you know, he 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 was confident that he could get it from the forty, and uh, we knew that was our mark uh, going into the game. And, and then, obviously, going into that drive, Kev came and reminded me to to where we needed to get to. And um, I just remember going back to a conversation me and Kate had, and it was, he was telling me just get to the forty. 
Uh, so, uh, no, definitely look forward to him making more of those. Uh, I, like I said, it's the first game of the season, but uh, glad he got to, to do that for us uh, in week one and, and his first NFL start. So, There's confidence and then there's confidence, and he seems to exude that. Yeah. How rare is it to see in, in, in kind of a rookie and just uh, in general? One from a rookie that's rare, but from a kicker that's even more rare. Uh, but, uh, you know, he puts in the work, so he should be confident, uh, you know, and, and uh, he should uh, want the ball in his foot uh, at the end of the game. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he, like, he, like I said, he was confident, and, and you know, that, that's more than half the battle right there. It was a very emotional day for you, build up to that game. You explained it after the game. Do you think now overcoming that, you're able to play more freely? Uh, I, I played free in the game. Uh, it was just an emotional game. Uh, but uh, no, I definitely thought I played free. So um, the the thing is to just play better and better each week. But I mean, every game isn't going to have that kind of emotion for you. If it's just the uh, first with the Browns. Or? I don't know. The um, Sunday isn't here yet, so we'll see how that goes. When you look at, you look at uh, this this game. Uh, Expect a much cleaner operation. You know what you like now. You sort of know how a certain guy will respond in a situation. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I would assume that it'll be be a much cleaner game from our, our standpoint. Um, you know, we, we address a lot of the, the the problems that caused a lot of those communication errors and those uh, things. Uh, so, uh, looking forward to, to obviously going to, to in this week of practice and preparation to to correct those things so that on Sunday that that they are clean. And but, do you know what you like better now? I mean, now. It's you can look out there and say, I know what's going to work on third down. Or, did you get a lot of good data? Uh, yeah, but I mean, every game is so different. So, uh, you know, each team proposes a different problem. Uh, so, uh, like I said, it's, it's correcting our things and, and uh, cleaning up our on our end to, to for us to play better. What stands out to you about this Jets defense? Uh, you know, they got a lot of talent. Uh, obviously, their front, their front uh, is really good. Uh, got a lot of good players. Uh, a system that they all know, uh, and and that they get to play play fast in. Uh, so, looking forward to that challenge uh, and, and uh, going against a good team. I mean, the Jet or the Ravens usually run the ball well, and they had a hard time running it against the Jets. Do you contribute that or attribute that most to the Jets D line? Or what else did you see about their run defense? Um, I think it's a collective effort uh, when it's to to stop the run. Um, so I think it was it was a conscious effort on. All their parts. Uh, so, um, so yeah. Do you do you guys go into a game though with the backs you have and the line you have, believing like you can run on anybody? Oh, for sure. I think we have the confidence in the guys to to say that, uh, to do that, uh, and, and uh, so so we look forward to those challenges. Off that, I mean, what's it like to know that you can hand hand the ball off to either one of those guys? They know it's coming, and. If they stop it, good for them. But the odds are they're probably not going to stop. Just what's that uh, feeling like? Uh, I would more so say is is just give our guys the ball, get our guys in the right position. Uh, not just the running backs, but the the tight ends, the the O line, and the receivers in blocking uh, positions to to give those guys a chance. And um, you know, talking to those guys, they just want a chance to, to for one guy. And and, and 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 if we can do that, then they can handle the rest. And, and um, and if they tackle us, then they tackle us. And if they don't, they don't. But um, you know, those guys are, are are definitely a threat. When you look back at the at the game, did you get away with something on this spike? Uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, their, their side claimed that you yeah, fake spike, and that should have been a intentional ground. Uh, going off what the ref said. Um, Kevin likes to move guys around pre-snap, shifts, motions, all those type of things. Just, I know it's part of your job, but just the complexities that he weaves into his offense, how, how, how much of an advantage does that give you? And also how m much more challenging does it make your job? Uh, I mean, as much as it makes my job challenging, it makes the defensive jobs even more. Uh, so uh, we know it's a part of our offense and, and it's to, to, to test the, to, uh, the defense's uh, st mental stability and, and, and understanding their, their plan. Uh, and it, and a lot of time it creates uh, advantages for us. So, so we do that for that. And um, so for me to learn it is the, 
I would say the quote unquote easy part of that. Did your knees not necessarily take you to uh, David Njoku in this game? And did, could you see him maybe getting involved? Uh, I, I think every game is different. Uh, uh, Dave did a great job in the run game. Obviously, he probably didn't get as many touches as he wanted. Obviously, he didn't get as many touches as he wanted. Uh, but it's part of the game. Uh, it's, it's no like, hold up, let's force the ball to somebody. Uh, you know, we had, we had a couple chances. Uh, I missed them on a couple, but. You know, it's the first game of the season. We've got a long way to go. Uh, and to think that uh, myself, him, and us as an offense are, are working on to, to spread the ball around to as many people as we can. And, and um, you know, when his time comes, it's time for him. You said you were confident that, the last one. that uh, all the stuff. Last question here. The game on Sunday. Was there a specific reason for um, kind of maybe getting you kind of rushing a couple of snaps and moving guys around once they lined up? I mean, was there a reason that? There was maybe confusion that you would want. Uh, I mean, I just think it was confusion. Yeah. Uh, and then, it, and, and like I said, it all falls back on communication. I think that's what was our, our one of our bigger issues, and it, and it had nothing to do with the other team. It had everything to do with us. So, um, you know, we got another week to, to prepare and to, to fix those. You're up. All right, there's Jacoby Brissett at the podium. Coming up next, we'll go around the league, including the popularity of this league continues to be huge. And are you prepared for tomorrow night? That's coming up next. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland. BN Cleveland.
And Bo here for my friends who are New Home Exteriors, offering high-performance products that are durable, long-lasting, cost, and energy-saving. To transform the look and efficiency of your home, don't go into winter with concerns about your roof. With New Home Exteriors, get a new roof installed in 7 to 10 days. No money down and payments as low as 96 bucks a month. Plus, receive free gutter guards with your roof purchase. Beautify your home with premium siding and roofing products at lower prices with Renew Home Exteriors. Visit RenewEstimate.com for more on that. Has anybody alive heard God Save the King? Because that's going to happen now. Yeah, you know, heard God's, the words uttered? Heard the song. Heard it with that at the end. I mean, So no. she's been it since, how old was she when she took it? In the 50s? Yeah. 40s? You're getting close to where there are many. Wasn't it like 48? Is that right? Sure. Because I thought you said you said something. You had a stat. She was 70 years or whatever on the. Charles was 52 years the heir. Yeah, that's right. So, so it would be 52? Or 72? Ah, who knows? Anyway. No, it would be 50. Yeah, it would no, be 52. I don't know. Because my parents, age-wise. No. No. All right, so she got it in, their in mid 52. 52. 52. Yep. Okay. So 70 years ago. So 70 years ago. So you would have had someone who's 85 from England potentially has heard God Save the King. Yeah. But it's for that long it's been God Save the Queen. Did you see all the struggles Chuck's having? Have you seen all those little clips oh, man. of him? It's great. With the pens yeah, and get, move, trying to move things off. Doesn't want to touch, move it off. And then have you seen his fingers went viral for his how big his fingers were? How Google it. Have not. Prince Charles fingers. <laughs> You're going to be stunned. It doesn't make sense. The whole, all of it is, it, it, it is fascinating to see because, I, I mean, how long, how long is he going to stay alive? Well, I don't know. I mean, he's what's he's in the seventies. Yeah. Wait a second. That's not a real picture, is it? Oh, that is. That's real. Uh huh. What do you mean? That's right. What's <laughs> happening? I don't know. I told you. He's seventy three. So it's I, I, you know. I mean, but I mean, these guys go to a hundred. His swollen fingers prompted a New Zealand butcher to sell King Charles sausages that look like his fingers. I bet that pleased him. <laughs> he went over real well. Yeah. To the Commonwealth. What the heck, bro? What the heck, man? That's crazy. There's something seriously wrong. I would agree. I don't think you're wrong. Like I never would have guessed that was him when I saw those pick those the the hands going viral. I never assumed that they would ever be his. Um, so yeah, that's not real. I don't. No, no, there real. is. There's a bunch of them. It's not just that image. There is a a bunch of images with him of with him. that pinky ring, w- with the hands swollen, really swollen. To the point, I don't even, you'd have to cut the pinky ring off. There's no way it's coming off that. <sighs> really threw him for a loop. The kids seeing this for the they first time. They are rather time. large. <laughs> they are. Well, yeah. I'm well aware. <laughs> yeah. All right, hold on. They are rather large, but with fine long fingers. The king himself even jokingly called them his sausage fingers back in 2012. Mm-hmm. Odima is a condition where the body starts to retain fluids in the limbs, not only the legs and ankles, but also in the fingers, which cause them to swell. Like, I'd See stop wearing the pinky ring, probably. It might be cutting off some circulation. Yeah. His hands look like they're going to explode. They do. That's like, correct. At one, it's yeah. like when... It's like the first death in seven. When of, yes. Yeah. Or when Violet ate the blueberry. Like, Violet eating the blueberry is a much better visual <laughs> image in your head than the first death in seven. You're right. Yeah. Or she yeah. turned into whatever. She ate the, the full, it was a full Thanksgiving meal. can't do it. And it you was can't blueberry do it. It's going to go bad for you, Violet. We got to get, get her to the juicers. We got to <laughs> juice get her. Get her out of there right away. Yeah, so God save the king. The imi- the thing with him complaining about the pen is just amazing. Like all of this stuff. This is, is wild. So awkward. So awkward. Nothing awkward about the NFL. In fact, the top six shows on television this week, all NFL, top five. Tampa Bay and Dallas did 25 million viewers on Sunday Night Football. The Bills and Rams was 21.3 on Thursday Night Football. Seattle and Denver did 19 million. So this is what we talked about yesterday, how um, ESPN gets its cake and eat it too. So they get the network number off of ABC. They get the ESPN number off of that. And then they get the number off of ESPN2 at the Mannings plus the viral part of the Mannings. Yes. I've already seen Peyton Manning doing this all over social. So they get time out, E. Get a timeout, Edie. Maybe they're trying to dry him off, he. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that one. She had not having it. Green Bay and Minnesota did 18.5. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. So those are the two national games with Fox and CBS. 
Pittsburgh, Cincinnati did 17.5, or is that the early window on CBS total? That was the that was the one o'clock game. So if that one game did seventeen point five, CBS must have done twenty five million at one o'clock on Sunday. So this is up three percent from two thousand and sixteen, which you will recall was the height of I'm not watching the NFL anymore for obvious reasons. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. In an era, folks, where everything else from a viewership standpoint is dro- has dropped significantly. Like a rock. Like a rock. To the point where the number one show on all of television other than the NFL is Yellowstone at around 15 million people. The NFL is doing 25, 20, 20, 19, 18 at 1 o'clock. 17.5 at 1 o'clock on a Sunday. Not to mention that they in are September, not, they're not even capturing the ratings properly anymore. No. no. So, it's, so who knows it's what it really is. way higher than that. Yeah. I have I have more numbers for you. 49ers Bears averaged 12 million viewers. And that was a slop fest. So that was their that was the Fox National Early game. Yeah. So if you weren't regional, you got that one. If you didn't have a team in your area, you got we had that one here. We had Bears Niners here at one o'clock. As the alternate. Those are crazy. They are king. And their college football, their feeder system is the prince. And everybody else is fighting for scraps everywhere else. Yeah. It's, it's just dominant, dominant numbers. And it's going nowhere. There's nothing else in television that continues to go up. Everything else is going down because you're spread so thin. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah, it's the, it's the king. Come on. All right, let's do a guess of stats before we go around the rest of the NFL for both you Ooh. and Gibbe. How many players today – in Major League Baseball, are hitting over 300. How many well, players in Major League Baseball look forward to bombing are this. hitting over 300? I'm going to say 50. I feel like from the way that you're asking it. Of course. Private school, I get it. Two. Well, more than that. So Ten. Twelve. Okay. Twelve. The 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 number one is like 320. It's – uh um. I think it's Freddie Freeman with L.A. Is it like 329? That's the best in all of baseball. There's only 12 guys hitting 300. Routinely through the history of this sport, people have hit 350, 340, 360 from time to time. You can chase yeah. 400. Nobody is. Nobody's hitting because the shifts and all this stuff and the emphasis on home runs or strikeouts, all this. Let me run this by you. So Aaron Judge hit two home runs last night, 56-57. Aaron Judge is one of the 12 – hitting over 300. He's hitting 310 with 57 home runs. The guy who's second in Major League Baseball in home runs is Kyle Schwarber. He's hitting like 213. Okay. So it's either gone and or it's – Aaron Judge uh, – not, not Is gone. his season Ruthian yes. compared to the rest. contemporaries? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> By the way – It is. I knew none of this until this morning. I wish you had asked me how many home runs Aaron Judge have hit this year. No, no clue. clue. He's Thank approaching 60. Which is incredible. Yeah. First guy since the steroid McGuire, era guys McGuire to get so to, so. to approach that. And he's going to blow through it. In addition to that, Pujols has got like 697, so he's going to get 700 home runs. I'm hoping. He's fourth all time. Yeah. Right now. What's And what's – why am I blanking on the record? Is it 73, 72, 71? 73, Bonds. So Bonds. Okay. Bonds is 73, and I think his career is like 763 or something. It was 755 forever with Hank Aaron. And then Bonds passed it, but nobody remembers the number. The only people I've had of Pujols are Ruth and uh, Ruth, Aaron, and Bonds. That's it. Uh, Steelers linebacker T.J. Watt will not receive uh, need surgery for his pectoral injury suffered in Week One. Is expected to miss six weeks. Uh, this per Adam Schefter. So that is beneficial for Pittsburgh that he's not going to miss the season on that. Uh, during his press conference yesterday, Browns head coach Nathaniel Hackett admits he definitely should have made the decision to go for it on fourth and five in the final yeah. seconds of Monday night's game against Seattle. Is this one of those things, though? Like, if he makes it, is he saying this? No. Of course not. No. So, like, I don't like him doing this. He should have defended his decision. His quarterback went his, out there. His, and, of course it's a stupid it's decision. It's indefensible. But his quarterback went out there post game and said, we wanted to get to the 47. Can you make it from there? They did. That's a 64-yarder. The guy missed it. If your quarterback's going to double down on the decision, so should you, the even if it is idiotic. Quarterbacks should say, they just traded three ones for me to not throw a pass on fourth and five so we could attempt a 7% field goal. <laughs> like, Yeah. Sweet. 
Head coach Andy Reid is blaming Arizona's turf as a primary cause for injuries to Trent McGuffey and kicker Harrison Butker. They don't even need Butker. They Butker need is Reed ruled out for tomorrow night, by the they way. They don't even need him. Just use Justin Reed. By the way, Justin Reed is cool. You ain't kidding. <laughs> He's awesome. You've clearly seen the mic'd up of him. Oh, yeah. Talking about it. The idea that a, a safety could kick it through the uprights on a kickoff, and he hammered the extra point. Yeah. It's crazy. You saw – did you see – oh, man, why can't I find it right here? There was a stat that's tweeted. He's the only guy – here it is. Whew. Justin Reed – I'm retweeting it right now. Justin Reed is the only player in the last 30 years to score a touchdown, make an extra point, intercept multiple passes, force multiple fumbles, recover multiple fumbles, record multiple sacks. The only player in the last 30 years? Yeah. Who's the one who did it 30 years ago? Because that's in our life. Well, Force Fumbles, it says, was first tracked in 1991. That's why they picked 30 years. Okay. Because who the heck played defense and kicked? And got interceptions. I mean, like right. Multiple, so you have yeah. to be a defensive and guy scored. to be able to, to do it. And you had to score. So it's pick six. Yep. Former Jet Matt Amendola expected to kick Thursday night for the Chiefs. Boo. Boo. Sorry. This goes back to our ratings. How many people do you think are aware right now this is the game of the week. It's not close, really. Yep. I don't even know what the second choice would be as Same. game of the week. This is game of the week by 100 miles. It's the Chargers at the Chiefs tomorrow night. How many people are aware that you can only watch this on Amazon Prime? Yeah. Take the time tonight to download know, it. If, like on my Roku, like last night, I was setting everything up because I, I, I don't watch Amazon Prime. I don't A lot of have people that on my have Roku. Amazon Prime, but they might not watch Prime Video. Exactly. That's the good news. Part. My wife, time. like the blonde, enjoys Amazon sure, Prime sure. frequently. Uh, so yeah, you like I have that. access they to the love, video. They love I just had Amazon to Prime. get it on the road to get it on there. Get it set up. Right. That's something that I don't know that people are. I think it's going to come tomorrow night. Everyone's going to watch this game. They're going to turn on because last week it was on NBC. You're going to turn on expected to find it on network or on cable. Not. Not. Only there. Only on Prime Video. What's the number? That it'll because they will know Prime exactly. Video. They'll know exactly. Just they like don't they need on streaming. Right. They're not doing books and catalogs and what did you watch? Like no. they'll know exactly who's watching. What's the number on that? Might be disappointed. I think it will be. You don't think? Okay, give me. Is it over or under? So six, last week six million. Last it's over. Okay. Last week's number was twenty one point three. And it was on NBC. It was on NBC. Now, yeah. in the in in Kansas City and in L.A., you can watch it on whatever t- local TV has. Yeah. It. So you will have those You will numbers, get that. But, but nobody in L.A. cares about the Chargers. They'll care about football, though. Correct. And it's a good For game. For sure. For sure. I'm going to say – I'm going to go – I am I would set the over-under at 10.5. Okay. Is my number. So can they get to um, Can they half? get to half of a network audience? just streaming i don't think so if, if anyone could do it it would be this game if this was any other game in week two no chance but this one's got all of the star power the only thing from a star power that would be better is if it was the chiefs and the bills yeah superstars everywhere i just wonder how the bars are figuring it out because if like i don't know from uh, i mean Ask really boys you at need, cam's corner tomorrow they're gonna you, have it sorted you need a you sure. need a smart tv you need – well, not only but, that, you need a Ethernet, I would think. Yeah. With hard-lined Internet. Yeah. What Wi-Fi do you want to hold up to that? Not. I wouldn't think. So you need that part of it. Here's the other thing. Is Amazon – I'm sure they prepared, but are they prepared for 10 million people trying to stream Amazon Prime? We'll find out, brother. Because HBO wasn't for the Dragon. No. It crashed – on the Dragon Show, week one, they weren't expecting 10 million people trying to stream that thing at once. No doubt. By the way, are you listening to the Talk the Thrones? It's like an hour-long pod. It's from The Ringer. Yeah. They I break think down each Chris episode. Ryan on yeah, that. Chris Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that enhancing your enjoyment? Did I'd that like bring it. you back on the last episode? They loved this last episode. Well, I think they would because they're book readers and they have all the knowledge. Of it. Really I was more like it. Chris. Yeah. I was more like him. Like, what are we doing? I. That's how I was. She's a book reader, so they have all they know who all these people are and where it's going. Who are getting a two minute 
clip here or there they're going to pay off down the road so excited about it too one thing i would tell he you on this claustrophobic which uh that made well, i was laughing i was actually listening to you as i was driving by you he on said claustrophobic. He, said, he said that it felt claustrophobic because they were all in king it Blender. just was always there yeah in that building yeah let me ask you this um isn't it stunning to you that so that show is set 200 years before yeah the end of game of thrones which i think we can say that game of thrones probably what do you feel like it took 10 years in real life sure a decade worth of time in that Ish. world yeah and we've done there a about. decade in like four episodes so we've done a decade in four episodes so we can say that this was um 180 years like none of these families even exist in 180 years it's wild and some of them are ancient houses correct correct From Valeria, right yeah. the Ver valeris guy the Targaryens are down to just two kids by this point. Two of them. By the time Game of Thrones starts. Yep. Um, the Strongs, High Towers, none of those people. No. At Game of Thrones, none of them are anything. The only one that's anything is Lannister. That's it. That we've seen so far. And we haven't even heard of the Starks yet, which I feel like they're around. I thought around. in the first episode there was some reference Imagine to them. They did. They've mentioned them. But they none of them are, like, in King's Landing. They're just up in the north doing the Correct. Thing, Winterfell. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. By like, the way. That's a lot to go wrong to just eliminate houses. In 150 years. Just to double back from the league who just put out a press release, over 121 million fans watched games during 2022 kickoff weekend, up 5% from last year. Yes. Yeah. There's no stop Nearly 83 million fans watched games Sunday afternoon of kickoff weekend. Just Sunday afternoon, the highest total since 2016, and up 7% from last year. Here's the deal. Printing money. This is the only – uh, it's one of the few things in this country that we all agree on. Football. Football. Football on Saturday, football on Friday night, football on Sunday. We all agree to it. This I'm is what we do. I'm fine with football on Monday. Did you see the numbers are... on the on the women, by the way? The biggest jump in uh in in audience was uh young women, like teens to twenties. Really? It was the biggest jump in the NFL numbers year to year. So it's be, it's become a so it, it it's been this for a long time, but it is the last great social activity that we all do. Social activity, gambling, sure. fantasy, all of it. Well, it is. It's, but but with the perfect. largest jump in women, that's especially young women. That's primarily going to be the social activity part of it. Probably that, and a lot of women are playing fancy football for sure, for sure, more more than ever before. Yeah, but it's all of those things lead to the type of jumps that, frankly, there's nothing else in entertainment that's doing that. OBM, the official printer partner of the Cleveland Browns. While you depend on your Browns to win, you can always depend on OBM because we tackle any size office. Call 216-485-2000 or visit ohiobusinessmachines.com. Z, one-on-one -on -one with Grant Delpit coming up next. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
ESPN Cleveland. Elk and Elk, serious lawyers, serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO for a free case review. Elk and Elk's proud partner of your Cleveland Browns. And now here's Z, one-on-one with our good buddy, Grant Delpit. Here with Brown safety, Grant Delpit. These are down to six minutes. Those Carolina Panthers and a nice interception. Congratulations to you on that one. How are you feeling when you went back and kind of just looked at this game as a whole? Uh, you know, I feel like we played a pretty good game like everybody knows we gave up two three big plays that was like 450 yards so definitely uh easy fixes and you know i'm excited for next week and on those other 47 plays he limited them to 2.2 yards per play was that kind of in your mind take the other plays away and we'll, we'll get to that in a second but was that in your mind sh- cap- showing what this defense is capable of yeah you know we put in a lot of hard work uh behind the scenes man and it's cool to see that come to fruition but you know we had a couple slip ups and we're gonna correct it all right let's talk about the interception what happened on that play he just, you know, kind of overthrew it. And, you know, as DBs, we say tips and overthrows. You got to get those. So, you know, you got to catch the ones they throw to you. Did you get some props? I mean, it was an impressive catch. It's not like he threw it right to you. The layout there, you were looking like DPJ with one of his layout catches. Nah, he has contested catches. <laughs> <laughs> as I told him, uh, Donovan, I, I think I took some lessons from catching with him. But, uh, you know, people know I don't drop nothing, man. I ain't going to. I ain't going to drop no easy stuff like that. What's wrong with y'all, man? <laughs> so you're entering year three, second year of playing. How much different is it for you now? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a comfortability, but you don't, you don't never get too comfortable in the league because, you know, everybody's trying to come get you every week. So, uh, you know, as long as we stay on top of what I need to do and, you know, play as a whole defense, you know, I think that everything's going to go smoothly for all of us. All right, what was kind of the tone in that defensive meeting room when you guys went through it? And, of course, with Coach Jeff Howard, elite the majority of the game. A couple plays, though, that got away from you and that are correctable. Yeah, it, I mean, it's good to know that it's easy fixes and that it's probably not going to happen again because um, we know exactly what to do. And, you know, like I said, it's easy fix, man. It's not it's not that hard. And isn't it always better to look at those things and be like, well, we still won. So we can clean them up after a win. And this isn't the reason that, you know, we're sitting here unhappy. I mean, we could have easily been sitting here unhappy because <laughs> K bailed, K bailed us out. But, uh, you know, as a defense, we got to do better, man. All right, walk me through that. Where were you on the sideline? What were you thinking as that kick was going? An LSU guy, you've won the national title with them. Were you, did you know what was going in for? Just walk me through everything going through your mind, where you were, your reaction, the whole deal. I was, uh, I, I was sitting down. I couldn't stand up. I was sitting <laughs> down. I ain't going to lie. Um, I had faith in them, but then, you know, it was a long-ass kick, so you're like, man, you know, I, I, <laughs> you know, we hoping to make it. but 58, know. like, yeah. yeah. That's a crazy kick. Um but in the league nowadays, it's not a crazy kick. You know, everybody kicking 60 yards, it seems like. But, um, man, just for him to be a rookie and come out here and nail that kick through the uprights, man, that's a, you know, kind of put it to the right. He said he was missing left for some crazy stuff and put it to the right and it curved right in, man. It was it was, it was great to see. And I saw he got AFC uh, Special Teams Player of the Week. So that's, man, kudos to him, man. Did you, would you know the LSU bond right there? Were you like, that's another LSU guy going out here balling for the Browns? LSU interception, LSU field goal. Yeah. You know, kind of dominant for you guys. Oh, man, you know how we do it, cool, calm, and collected. Like after uh, after the kick, you know, he came back to the. We was in kickoff, kickoff huddle, cool, calm, and collected. You know, he's not he's not hyped up in the moment, man. You know, he's a, he's a real professional already. So I'm glad I'm on my team. Do you remember what you did once it did go through? I don't remember. I know I was relieved because he <laughs> saved our ass. <laughs> Which is good, and yes, certainly it is. It's a team game, and you see that right there. So let's talk about that for a second. When you go through from your standpoint, your role on a couple of those plays, what do you want to clean up? Uh, you know, it's communication. Um, communication and just being a, ahead of the play before it comes, knowing the situation, you know, stuff like that. So easy fixes. How hard is it to kind of balance sometimes when you know, hey, look, maybe the, I think the ball's coming out quick. I have a chance to make a play in those instincts versus, all right, we got to make sure, stay deeper than the deepest and not let any of these things happen. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that's the league, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the league. You just got to know the situation in the game, and we got to communicate better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys feel very confident, obviously, going forward that this is going to be something that you guys will take care of it. And look, you go back to the second half of last year, once you guys all got comfortable playing together, we were pretty locked down on defense on the back end. Yeah, we were. We were. And we were trying to continue to build off that and, you know, take this momentum that Kay gave us and, uh, you know, our first half defense and keep going to week two. All right. We're on to the Jets. Don't talk about that one. We won that one. You'll talk about your interception, sure. Now we're on to the Jets. It's a team with some talent in that wide receiver room. Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis. They got a nice tight end group with Conklin and Uzoma. They can a couple running backs who can run it and 
By the way, they threw it to the backs 19 times last week, which is wild. But what do you see from this offense? Uh, you know, we see uh, an offense that, you know, they, I don't know, last week was kind of weird. They threw the ball like 54 times or something like that. But we know they're going to try to establish the run. And you know, they got a veteran quarterback in Flacco. Uh, like you said, young receivers, um, you know, kind of speedy running backs, a lot of motions and stuff like that. So, you know, I think we're going to – Get in the film books, know what we got to do, trust Woods playing, and, you know, go to work. When you have a quarterback like Joe Flacco, he's not going to run on you, not a threat to run it, but he can throw it the length of the field. I mean, he has an absolute cannon even all these years later in the league, former Super Bowl MVP. How do you kind of – how does that change a game plan when a guy that – you don't have to worry about him scrambling, but you do have to worry about him launching that ball? Yeah, like, it's like a smart, real, very smart veteran quarterback, man. It's just tough going against those guys because they've seen it all already. Um, so, you know, we just got to be on our P's and Q's and, like I said, clean up the mistakes from last week. What's the vibe after getting that win? Yeah, it's great. Like, everybody loves Victory Monday, that off day Tuesday, coming this Wednesday, ready to work. You know, it's, it's different. Come Back in 30. We win. You know, it's a great feeling. You excited for the home opener, get in front of the fans here? This is the first time, by the way, going into week two, as you well know. This is way before you were around where I was around even 2004 like we haven't come back here for a week two in front of the home fans with a win in a long time brother that's gonna be pretty exciting it's gonna be a pretty good environment I mean I'm used to it uh <laughs> yeah like I said I'm used to you know going out week one handling business but um it's great to do that for this fan base um you know we think we're excited to keep it going well Grant thanks so much for the time congrats on the first of many interceptions this year and good luck on Sunday thanks. you're up gonna be fun seeing that defense uh you know you, you can hear it in there he gets the pick Wants one back. Yep. Understandable. Yep. Um, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. This is – you say to yourself, there are two mistakes that happen in this game from a bus standpoint. I don't put much on them from the McCaffrey picking up a fumble. That's just kind of a random thing that happens. And nine times out of ten, you recover it and it's your ball. But they just happen to have one of the best players in the NFL. He scooped it and went for 28. But from the other side of it, when we talk about it's just two busts, we, we just can't. We don't have that margin. Right now, we don't have a margin where you can have two busts. You can't have a bust, let alone two. It's it'd be it could be critical against almost any other team other than the one that we played, and perhaps the one we play on Sunday. Although I'm certainly not asking for busts on Sunday either. I could not agree more, and I think it's something they know they have to clean up, and it's something that I think they are, don't like hearing about. Well, the best way to not hear about it, yeah, not Look, but to do it. Listen, this is part of it. It's yep. man in the arena, right? Yep. That's the deal. That's Everybody the deal. signed up for the for this. This is what it is. Everybody kind of understands that this, there's a certain way that we have to play through these first 11 games to get to a point where you are where you need to be for the stretch run and Deshaun Watson comes back. So that's a lot on this defense. But th in this instance, as soon as we figured out it was going to be 11 games for Deshaun, it was in the brochure. This is known. Uh, and it's, it's interesting. We saw um, – Nick and Kareem taking a press conference together, together. Today, which awesome. was so great. Uh, the two of them doing that together. Um, and you think about how much they – they had 38 touches. It was uh, on, 22, on 23, and 15. That would be yeah. 38, touches. 38 touches. That's right. 213 total yards, two touchdowns. By the way, the rest of our offense had 19 touches. Everybody else combined was like 19 touches and mm -hmm. like uh, 100 and – I got that somewhere. 38's a lot. 38 is. But but I do think that the reason I set that first over under at 35 is I think that's your target. I can't imagine us losing much if we have 35 touches no. between those two. So Kareem on 38 touches, 213, two touchdowns. The rest of the Cleveland offense combined for 19 touches and 151 scrimmage yards. Here's a couple of stats for you, and, and I'm going to break them down even further. So one, the Browns are 18 and 10 with both Chubb and Hunt on the field. Since 2019, they are eight and 14 in games in which one or both have missed. Okay, yeah, and including feels like yeah, and one of those wins was Dearness on Thursday Night Football, which we know about. Here, this to me is this is unreal. This one, this stat's unreal. The Browns are I wrote this one down. 16 and five, with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt each getting five or more carries in the same game. So I find it hard to believe 18 and 10. That means uh, there are seven games that are unaccounted for in that 18 and 10 to drop to 16 and 5 in which one didn't get five carries. Kareem didn't get five carries. Must have been early be, and 19. Or injuries. That would be 19 when he first came back. 19 or injuries. Yeah. Where he got injured in the first yep. half. And, yeah. But um, 16 and 5. 16 and 5 yeah. in games in which they each get five 
or more carries, which I think is a, a phenomenal thing. And here's another one. Since 2019, having Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt in the lineup together versus not having one or both of them is worth seven points and 50 yards of offense a game. It's like their Henry number. It's even bigger. Seven and 50. We go from 25.4 points a game down to 18 and a half points a game from 370 down to 320 yards a game. That's Un wild. Yes. That's what it feels like, though. So much more to come. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland. Catch the Browns preview show tonight at 7 on the University Hospital's Cleveland Browns radio network. Jacoby Brissett joins the voice of the Browns, Jim Donovan, and the fellas. I'm sure it's not going to be me. <laughs> Did I write it wrong? It's all right. You had me and Z. Are you? Not you. No. Ken Carmen Gerard Cherry. There you go. Yeah, no, I'm not, a, I'm not Not me. Yeah, By the way, late breaking Thursday night news as I deflect from my errors. Yep. Keenan Allen One out. Minute. Donald Parham out. Tight end. Allen out's big. Josh Palmer, if he's on your waiver wires. JC Jackson little, questionable. Not a bad little grab if you need if you're looking for, if you're testing for wide receiver help in week two, or if you lost Keenan Allen. Josh so Palmer's right now a that's one. a three. KC by three is all. So they're saying they're even. 
Chargers are pretty nasty, brother. So is KC. It's going to be a fun game. It's like you versus me. 30 seconds. Because I got the Chiefs winning it. You got the Chargers winning it. That means oh, there's baby. a Thursday night score coming tomorrow that's pretty big. <sighs> well, I feel like it'll be right. Can't believe that. What if you both now? Wait a minute. What if you both go Broncos different directions, stumped. though? The One of you has to be wrong. How little you've listened to the show. You know nothing. We don't go. You know nothing, John different. Snow. Ten seconds. <laughs> the next level is next. Cleveland Browns Daily, eight fifty ESPN Cleveland.